Stay tuned to see the world's first remote electric LED light bar controlled from the confinements of your cab. Now this project is sponsored by Oxbeam who donated this uh, beautiful 50 inch all aluminum LED light bar with uh, flood beams over here, spot beams in the middle. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. It's all, it's all aluminum. There's no plastic on this thing. The light bar comes stock with these, uh, these brackets which work great. They're nice cast aluminum but for my project I'm not actually going to use this and that's because these ends are actually at an angle. This is square right here and these are sitting at an angle about like that. They're sitting at actually about a 12 degree angle and if I was to place these on here as you rotated the light around this would actually twist. It actually twists from this way to this way as it goes around and I can't have that twisting. So what I need to do is um, make this a square end and I'm going to do that by actually taking a piece of flat bar and bringing it off and bending it at an angle and then I'll have a pivot point but I also in doing this I want to bring my pivot point out in front where this light bar is balanced. It doesn't make a big deal if you're using these but I want to balance it because I'm going to use this little gear reducing right angle slow speed motor that I don't want a ton of torque on that shaft. I want it to be almost a perfectly balanced light bar. So this back bracket's all bent up and situated like it should. And then the motor is actually going to go in right here. And these two are going to be essentially linked together. Well, the motor shaft. And so the motor shaft as it spins is going to rotate like this, taking the light essentially from facing forward to up to behind the vehicle. But you can see right here we have what's called a D-shaft and we have a round hole. So to make a round hole into a D-shaft, what we're going to do is take another piece of round rod and we're actually going to grind this down so we just have this little sliver that used to be right there and we're going to insert that into our hole and weld that part to this so this is a permanent fixture so the D-shaft can only go in one way and it's locked to this piece. There we go, just sliver, just the negative of that with the uh, ground off of that makes a round hole so we can put that in the round hole and we can slide this little piece in there and we'll weld this to the shaft D shaft so now it fits over there perfectly so I've been playing with a couple different designs I was liking this square design right here but this is curved so I kinda wanted to match the curve of that so we're gonna use a curved piece and if I hate it I can cut it square um, and that's going to mount on the side right here, one on each side matching and the motor will mount to this and the shaft is actually what will turn this and this will space it up off the roof where this doesn't hit when it rotates but time to plasma cut two of these out that match each other and you can see that it's pretty well balanced it's a little heavy on the back side but not much but that's the way it will rotate motor mounted and to clear the um, to clear these screws, I actually had to cut my bracket that I just bent and make a step in it. And then it'll clear the screws better. But this bracket just goes on like that. Then over the top of that to support the end of the shaft because the weight of the entire light fixture of one side is resting on this shaft. And I don't want it pulling down and ruining the gearboxes. I have another little bracket that will come over the top of that, support the end of the shaft. And that'll actually get welded right there. And then I'll finish building a box to encapsulate this to protect this from the weather. I got it set up and I got it all wired up just um, just testing the circuitry. And I had to I wanted to wire in two micro switches. These are the same thing found in microwaves and stuff like that. To stop it, because I can't have it go all the way around the way it's set up. I want it to 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 go a certain distance and then stop and not go any further. And that's exactly what this micro switch right here does. But it'll allow me to back off and the other one will do the same thing the other way when it goes too far. It'll stop. So I can have stops on both sides. So I made some little guards, some little shields for the uh, the motor right here. They'll actually uh, keep the moisture out because it's not really waterproof but uh, if it got a little wet it wouldn't hurt it. And what I'll do is this will install and then I will, after it's all painted up, I'll grease the joints actually. Um, to keep water out, just put a little marine grease around the edges 
and that'll keep any moisture out. And same with my limiting switches. I got them all installed. They have a little guard around them too. When the switch comes over this way, you can see the uh, the switch on the left, just a little arm comes up and um, triggers it and shuts that one off. The light comes over facing backwards, a little limiting switch. I wanted it to face down the same way as um, I had to peel the little teeter-totter. And just a little arm comes around and grabs that. There's always going to be a little bit of play in it, just from the shaft of the motor and the motor itself. And so I want to take this play out, and the way I'm going to do that is by installing springs down there. So I need to make some custom springs. And what you use for custom springs is a music wire, spring steel. So pretty self-explanatory. We just take my drill, we put it in the uh, the vise, we clamp, we just put a, any size rod in there. This, but you got to remember that it'll actually expand out bigger. So I got a very small rod chucked in my drill. I got it sitting in reverse. Got my extra, got seven feet of wire hanging off. Plenty to do what I need to do. And then I will just set this clamped it in there. I got this a pair of vice grips that'll spin around but I want to apply tension to it. So I'll take a rag and I'll take my other vice grips and I'll clamp that on and that'll give me some tension. And then it's just a matter of just pulling the lever. And just stacking it on itself. And we just slide the thing off. We got a spring. We'll just bend our ends. So you got a beautiful spring. So to try to um, take out the wobble when the light's in the forward position or the rear position, this would be the, the forward position. I'm moving the mount to the light. I had to install some springs and that'll keep take out any wiggle. It'll pull it in one direction. And the same when it's in the reverse position right here. So originally I just had one spring installed but that wasn't strong enough so I installed two. One in the back of the light for leverage and one more on the mount. But the springs were interfering with each other and binding, so one I had to route around this little, um, just this little bolt with a washer on it to retain it. And now they, they stay out of each other's way, whether like moving forward or back. And they wouldn't hurt with a little grease on them as they're sliding back and forth. But that's for after paint. But now it takes out, it takes out any wobble. It pulls it one direction, so there won't be wobble while you're driving down a, a bumpy road. So now I got the light in place and it can go forward and back and everywhere in between but I don't have any side lights so I'm also going to add these spotlights that are going to mount permanently to the sides and they'll be in a fixed position but I'll be able to um, put them where I want and this will give light all the way around. Right now they're spotlights but I'm going to make them into floodlights by removing the, um, the reflectors. But I thought I'd show you the inside and show you how well these are construction. I mean, this is all a solid piece of aluminum. And the entire housing right here, with the cooling fins and everything built in, this is all one piece. This is all solid one piece. I'll take the little lens out of there, and I've already unscrewed this, but this is optical optics. And then we're left with just the LED soldered to the board. It's all pretty, it looks, looks really nice in there. They've done a, I mean, it's all done by computers and stuff like that, but beautiful circuit board. Um, should last a long time. People have done videos where they've um, taken these and they've um, submerged them in water for days and froze them and drove over them and smashed them with hammers, threw them 20 feet in the air, dropped them, and they survived. Being this one-piece construction, having these end caps and everything that are solid, you know, really nice, but... Um, just thought I'd show you the optics, so now I'm going to install these on the side. Light bar. Put light wherever you want it. Turn it on. We also got the side lights that illuminate 180 degrees, but I can turn this, I can put, I can position this anywhere I want. I can look at my engine. I can look right in front of me. I can look 10 miles down the road. I can look at the trees up above, or I can look directly behind me all with the flip of a switch. This is my control center for the light bar. This is something else. This is something I've had up here for quite a while. Um, and this controls um, other stuff, auxiliary fan, 
um, other KC lights, red accent lights. But this right here, so this would be my uh, my side lights. This would be my, uh, my the actual bar light, and this is forward, reverse, frontwards, backwards, whatever you want to call it. All can be controlled from right here. Give you a good view of it up here. Um, it took a ton of wiring, and I actually already had a hole in the center of the roof from something that was mounted. You know, when you have a 30, 40 year old truck, you're gonna have stuff that was mounted before, and you can see that I've siliconed over it because it's been leaking, so that was actually easy. I just started drilling up through Bondo on the inside, and they'd never welded it shut or anything, so I just ran all the wiring through there, plugged it up really good with uh, some putty, some tar type putty for AC systems. That'll seal it all up. You can see all the wiring looms and everything else. You know, the matte black. I put a matte black finish on everything. And I just actually uh, just roughly welded it to the roof. It wasn't the cleanest stuff. But again, it's not a show truck. It's a work truck. So it's just welded down to these brackets. That actually, it's just an L bracket that can actually um, be unbolted at any time. And you can just take everything off and then just this L bracket stays on and... Um, can be cut off, but there's never going to be a leak because it's welded. Watch guys. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe.